Special mention of a little champion that we have in our midst, praise God. We know him on the drums, praise God, but we also know him on the track, praise the Lord Jesus. Make some noise for Brother Madain. He was able to represent his school in champs and he did well. See my colleague medal, watch him now, pay me no man. Stand up to the seal. So, yes, he's good on the track. Can't wait to actually see you live and direct. Next time I know invite me here so I can come and watch Bada Odin run. Praise God. So that's awesome. We have all sorts of talents in the house. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. So we have also a little young lady who's celebrating her birthday today. Praise the Lord Jesus. Children, what you call her? Auntie Anna. Shout that. Let me hear again. So now we're gonna say, show the big happy birthday to Sister Anna after two, one, two. Happy birthday! Ooh. Happy birthday. <laughs> Stand up, Sister Anna. We're gonna do a sing quickly for her sister Tani Tashina had hers in the week along with Tandiwi. She's not here. Where's mother? Where's mother? Mother on the old side, just tell her we send her our love to her. Now that it is a reality that that young girl, she does not come from a wealthy house. Uh, that young man does not come from a wealthy family. But then he strives because in his mind, he does not see himself based on his environment. He does not see himself based on the status quo that tells him if you come from a certain community, then this and that is going to happen to you. We've seen young ladies who were told that as you reach 15, you're bound to get pregnant. So might as well, you finish with school. We've seen young men who were told that as soon as you reach 13, might as well you go out and start to do some hustling because nothing good don't come from your community. It, 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 it kind of reminds me of cheating. Jesus, because when they look at Jesus, somebody said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? You need to understand that Nazareth was a ghetto. Mm -hmm. Are you with me, somebody? Nazareth was a little shock, mm -hmm. a little zinc fence, if you will, in Jerusalem. It was not like uh, the prominent Jordans and so on and Capernaum, but it was a situation where Jesus chose to live in an environment that had a ghetto and then his mind though was a mindset that he was not concerned about where he was living he was not concerned about who was his neighbor and if you notice when Jesus started to elevate and started to heal and preach we find that his family they came after him and said boy you must be mad. You see, it was not Jesus was thinking madly, but Jesus was thinking outside of that which was allowed for you to think in the ghetto. So you should be among the status quo. And if it is a situation that your mother got pregnant early, then naturally you are going to get pregnant early. If your brother jumped out of school, then naturally you should jump out of school. And so we've got to know our friends. We've got to know our circle. We've got to know who we associate ourselves with. Because now we've got to have the mind of Christ. Because it was Paul who said, let this 
mind be in you. Jesus was a little ghetto carpenter boy, but then he saw himself as something more than just what his environment told him. Oh God, the clothes and the passions of this time is the sign to rip you away from the true and living God. But is there somebody who still got a mind who can say, for God I live and for God I die. Oh God, and so Daniel was in the lion's den based on the fact that the God that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, mm -hmm, and Abednego is the same God that I am serving. And so we realize that the Apostle Paul, he says the weapons, watch this, the weapons of overwhelming, mm -hmm, they are not corner. It is not a physical battle. No, no, no. But he said the weapons are not corner, but they are mighty through God. Watch this. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination. You see, the weapons of our warfare are here to get rid of your bad mind. Can I talk to somebody? It is here to destroy your wrong thinking. It is here to destroy how you perceive God and how you perceive yourself. Are you with somebody? Have you ever seen a beautiful young lady who when she gets a compliment, she tells you not tell me nothing, can nothing on the sound. I do put me somebody, and then they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But let me let you understand this what you see is based on what is in the mind. We have beautiful young ladies who can see themselves as being beautiful because in their minds they already see themselves as being ugly because watch us now. The word of God said here, and your soul shall live. But let me give you a fifth side. Here, the wrong things and your soul can die. Are you with somebody? So if you feed of negativity, if you get up hearing somebody telling you that you're very big, you lick them too thick, your color too dark, you look a bit too short, you look a bit too fat, you look a bit too skinny and you feed off this negativity then it is going to form within your mind a constant and an idea of who you are and this is why folks can't be happy because their minds have already told them who they are this is why some women can't appreciate being treated good by a good man because the man they had before uh, feed them uh, with some negativities uh, about themselves, uh, told them uh, about some flaws that they had, uh, and so they can't get themselves uh, out of that negative mentality. Uh, it's just somebody uh, who needs uh, a mental check. Uh, it's just somebody uh, who needs uh, to give your mind uh, a check. It is not about the physical. Whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things are pure. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, I need to I need to think. So what? Uh, something ugly? Something that look good? God's word tell me that I am fearfully and wonder. Lord God, can I tell somebody, you some lick them too big, are the best big lick them you ever see. Some teeth them buff, are the best buff teeth you ever see. Some eye them too big, are the best big eye you ever see. Cause I'm not dictated by your opinion, but I am moved by the word of Almighty God. Somebody open your mouth and pray to him.
the God that we serve is an extraordinary God. And the reason some of you still remain the same is because you have an ordinary mentality. But the day when you start to think extraordinary is the day when you begin to realize that God is going to move you out of where you are. Because he and Jesus was about to do something and he took that man outside of the town, left his disciples, left the people and brought him one side because Jesus was about to do something extraordinary. Watch this now. Jesus have a feeding ministry where he feed the multitude. He have a good healing ministry. I told you that he touch and heal. Jesus have a resurrection ministry because he saw him resurrect Lazarus. But then Jesus have one unorthodox ministry because Jesus have one of the best pitting ministry. Lord God Almighty. Where anybody can't think about. Anybody know about spit? Where we talk about spit? Spit are something where disgusting. Spit are something where even feel one you don't want to touch you. But Jesus knew that he was about to do something that the people saw it. They would answer, that's nasty. That's messed up. Am I talking to somebody? So Jesus took him and spit on his eyes. I don't know about you, but I believe that's the best spit that has ever been spot. I believe I'm the best saliva you could have ever think about. Some we talk about the blood of Jesus. I will sing about the precious blood. My, my God, what I want to do to get some of that special spit that flows from the King of Kings mouth and the Lord of Lords. I see some of you while I'm preaching, I skin up on the fears, and that's why I want to put no heal, and that's why I want to put no bless, because I'm not too scornful, I want to have enough fear, whatever me, Mr. Jesus, not just spit, more your heart up, more your gear up, and wet up me I them, if I spit you up a spit, make me see, God, if I wet you up, wet up me I, make me see, it might have last little some, but I'm me ever see, somebody who open your mouth, and bless him. Some of you are going to be better than Jesus. Some of you are going to be too stush. Um, um, Lord, you sure there is no other way? Lord, I hear say a touch. Then Lord, give me a I Can't you just touch my eyes, Lord? Jesus, you need to have a spirit from the island, Jesus. Um, um, before you speak, Jesus, can you just... Get some water in the mud and wash it out first, Jesus. You see, you see, I want to be healed in our God. But I want to be healed by my own terms. I want to be healed because I'm home before you. Can I tell you? It's not about you. Beggars not have no choice. So if I pick Jesus, I pick in your fears. Take pity in your fears. Were you forced by anybody to make this decision or are you doing this of your own free will, of your own mind? Of my own free will. Come on, put your hands together for that. Put your hands together for that. Come on. I know, therefore, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I just come, come and make her welcome. Just come and make her welcome. Come and make her welcome. Come on, everybody, you know what to do. Just come and make her welcome. Praise God. Take on your turn, I'm missing to a message. No, the messenger arrived. Committed to the journey, so me now go backslide. Looking through the spirit on a physical eyes. Ooh.